This episode of The Horror Show is brought to you by Michael Pittman and Katie Brown. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Michael and Katie donated over at patreon.com slash I hate horror. So if you can support monetarily, that's a good way to do it. Uh, we just uh, we're shipping out our hats this week. So you guys should be seeing those soon. And we've got new shirts coming out. So keep your eyes peeled. So with that said, it's Monster Vision Week. Waxwork coming up. Enjoy the show. Show, show that dissects, mutilates, dismembers, and butchers all of your favorite and not so favorite horror movies and other horror related events. I'm Sean. I'm Joe. It's Monster Vision Week. It is. <laughs> <laughs> song is not fitting for whatever I'm doing. Um, we got two movies picked out for us um, by a couple great people here. This episode is brought to us by Derek Bloom from first to last fame who decided like we should have money <laughs> so thanks derek we appreciate it and you picked out a fucking awesome movie waxwork have you seen this before no and i'm gonna say something so we're doing i picked out patreon picks for monster vision week yep. harder than i thought <laughs> not a lot of monster vision movies on that list uh but we're doing waxwork this week and we're doing the fly next week um, I think these two movies after watching them are the perfect monster vision week movies. Like, I don't think we'll be able to do a monster vision series again. That's as perfect as this. Cause waxwork is like, you never seen it either. Right. I had not our buddy, Mike, who we talked about. Yeah. Um, in the graveyard last time he loves this movie. I Everyone knew he loved does. this movie. Everyone. But I, I had never seen it. Um, it's crazy. And, I think this fits Monster Vision Week perfectly because how many movies did I not see until Monster Vision? Like, right. so like, I, like this was like one of those undiscovered gems. It felt just like watching Monster Vision again, where I was like, where has this been my whole life? Because nothing on Monster Vision was new. So <laughs> it was always like, fuck, what the fuck is this? And then on top of it, we have The Fly, which is just such a fucking gross, perfect movie. It's it's perfect. It's disgusting. It's so fucking gross. Yeah. It's just vile. Um, it was, I mean, obviously we're going to talk about this next week, but uh, I hadn't seen it in so long and it like rejuvenated me because because we've talked about it on the show yes. about how much I liked it yeah. and I knew how much I liked it, but then watching it, I was like, fuck, I really knew how much I liked it. There's just things you overlook and maybe it's with the show too, where we had watched so many movies that like I, cause I watched the fly like in the last couple of years and even I was just like blown away again. Like I was just like, fuck, yeah. what the fuck is this? Like this is out, out of, out of control. But anyway, Waxwork also very good. Um, it is 1988. So, yes, yes, yes. And before we get into it, let's do our drive-in totals from Joe Bob. Uh, this was technically on Last Call with Joe Bob. This is a hard one to track down. Actually, so is The Fly. So, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, he says, this movie is what Monster Vision is all about. I, I fucking agree. I completely agree also. So, here are the drive-in totals, guys, for Waxwork, 1988. 43 dead bodies, zero naked breasts, one live severed hand, African voodoo face painting, French S&M, fang sprouting, bat shooting, raw meat gobbling, sword fighting, strangling, stabbing, headbutting, Axe to the Back, Death by Fire, Gratuitous Dialogue with Loud Music, Werewolf Foo, 
vampire foo, mummy foo, zombie foo, senior citizen foo, two stars. Two stars. I don't Wait, know. what? I don't know. Call it. <laughs> he said it's what Monster Vision is all about, but gave it two stars. Also, do you think it's because there was no art barking? A hundred percent. Also, I, I, I re-listened to our old ones to get some information um, to, to just to talk about. But one of the things that cracked me up is this was before we were doing like Letterbox. I don't know if you were even on Letterbox when we did it. If you were, it was new, and you definitely weren't looking at my ratings as heavily as you do now. Um, but it's so funny because in that episode, we're talking about what he rated a couple movies, and <laughs> It's Alive and The Exorcist got the same rating. And your mind is, like, blown. Like, in the episode, you're like, wait a minute. You're like, you stop the show, and you're like, are you telling me he gave It's Alive the same rating as The Exorcist? I was like, 100%. And you were like... All right, whatever. <laughs> and it was just like it was this glimpse into what I would suffer <laughs> like months well, later. To be fair, that's fucking bullshit. It is. And it, you know what? I'm I'm almost with him on it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um and then after we do this, uh after we talk about the movie, we will bring back the Monster Vision game. Yes. I've got them out. Now, I do have the results from last year too, oh, just to go over them. So, last year we did 4 weeks. This was it really week last year. Yeah. Wasn't two years ago? Two years, like episode 54. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. Where are we? I don't know where we are. We like time traveled. Um, So we did, um, we're doing two episodes this year. Last year we did four, which was a lot. Um, But we'll do a lot of, I I think I have five for this this week. Um, Nice. So last, last year you got, we did 16 total. In four over four episodes, you got eight correct. Wow! So you're batting five hundred, which I think is pretty good. All right, pretty okay. good. Uh, you didn't get Phantasm. You got Critters, The Exorcist. You didn't get The Fog. You got People Under the Stairs, which was like mind numbing. I was listening to it and I was like, and I was on the show. I'm like, you're not gonna get this. It's fine. And then you were like, The People Under the Stairs. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> And then Critters you got because it said, like, Tumbleweed. And you were like, I was like, "How? what set that off for you? And you're like, it said Tumbleweed. Like, All right. uh, you got Carrie. You did not get Funhouse. You got Serpent in the Rainbow, which was mind-blowing. You got Phantasm 2. You didn't get Nightbreed. You didn't get Ghoulies. And then the last week, no Exorcist, no Friday the 13th Part 6, no Dolores Claiborne. I didn't get those? No. Um, you got The Birds. And you guessed Return of the Living Dead without any clues. <laughs> I remember that. Just based on the year. <laughs> I said 1985, and you said Return of the Living Dead. <laughs> so this this year, we will do it again. It'll be uh, at the end of this episode. So with that said, let's finally get into Waxwork, man. All right. All right. So it opens up with Sing, Sing, Sing by uh, clarinist, clarinetist. Penny Goodman, which you start a movie with that. I'm I'm all in. Especially juxtaposing it. <laughs> Joe's watch just broke. Uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> sorry. Go on. Clarinet is Benny Goodman's uh sing sing sing, which is that uh great way to start it, especially when you like put it side by side with a guy uh getting his head shoved into a fire. Yes. Burned alive, but not even like burned alive, just like burning his head off. Now, let me ask you, does this scene come back into play? Yeah. Okay. It's, <laughs> we will, uh, when we get there, I'll tell you. Um, I was also a little confused. Oh, it's the grandpa? Yes. Okay. The I, grandpa. Yeah, okay. I, I, I. But they really are not very clear about it. Because see, my, really... my issue was I started it and then I had to pause it, but I, I stopped right at the credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I almost forgot that, that happened until you just said so, it. So, yeah. So this guy gets killed, and all you see is like the murderer's hands. And uh, one of the reasons it kind of throws you off is because the murderer's hands like start stealing shit, like jewels and stuff. Yes. That does not come into play that I'm aware of. Just the only thing that matters, and it kind of doesn't even really matter, is that he killed the grandpa that we'll find out later. <laughs> Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> But it doesn't really matter because, like, Grandpa's ghost doesn't come to save him or anything. It's just like, I don't know. It's all a catalyst for the newspaper that they'll find later. Like, that's it. So, anyway. <laughs> well, ruin this movie for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we open up uh, with this family. 
a very well-to-do, beyond well-to-do, wealthy, rich. Lifestyles of the rich this and famous. This kid is so fucking pampered. It's unbelievable. It's so weird, too. Like, this kid is so rich, and... um. They're sitting at this giant table, him and his mom. Uh, it's a it's a pretty funny scene, though. I couldn't tell if I was supposed to like this kid or hate him at the beginning because he's like, bitch, he's like, mom, can I have some coffee? And mom's like, no. And he's like, mom, I need my coffee. Well, he's a total brat in the beginning. But then he like, he's totally turns into a normal end. kid. Yeah. yeah. It was, a, there was some, I mean, it's an iffy movie. Yeah, I, you know what? Joe Bob might be right, but it, I love <laughs> I love the movie, but it's just maybe not that good. Like, because there's just so many elements. It's like this part is weird, and I hated him. Like, I was like, this kid fucking sucks. And then later on, he acts like a totally normal kid. And this is the kid from Gremlins. Yes, those that are yes. wondering. <laughs> and it stars uh, the girl from a f- past horror show episode. Who? Muffy and Buffy. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh, she's and she is a good looking gal. Yes. She's a pretty girl. I, I really like her. I like her face. She's got a nice smile. She does. She alive? Oh yeah. Did she, she li- do the cons? I think she lives in Connecticut. I gotta look this woman up. How old is she? Now? Stand outside her house. <laughs> yell yell at her to come outside. <laughs> come out. I love I, you. I mean that was thirty I, years ago. I love your smile. <laughs> 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 um, my wife drives me She's in the car like are you serious that's why we drove out here I don't tell her <laughs> like, hey, just stop here for a second <laughs> um, this, this rich kid's name is Mark um, and he's mad because his mom won't let him have coffee he's like really mad um, he goes but mom I need caffeine badly um, but instead the butler gives him a cigar. But instead he walks up. <laughs> oh, and, well, we also know like the butler kind of is like taking care of this kid because <laughs> earlier the mom's like, could you please stop drinking with the butler? <laughs> and the kid's like, oh, they're fine. She's like, it doesn't look good to be hanging out with like lower folk. So this kid's just like boozing with the, the help. <laughs> Who are all, well, some of them are British. <laughs> uh, yeah. One's Spanish. And instead of asking a British butler to do his homework later, he asks the one that doesn't speak English <laughs> to do his homework. Um, and also, they're college students, I believe. They are. I, I got to stop calling them kids. They're kind of men. But it looks like they're in high school. Well, he's living at home. These are the only people in the 80s that were cast incorrectly no, for No, no, they're high school. They're high school. That that room was supposed to be for high they're school? They're high school. Oh, are you yeah, serious? Yeah, I, because I pulled up their, uh, the wiki, and it says high school students. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Okay, well, then that makes perfect sense for the 80s, because they all look like they're 30. So, Dude, um, it does not make sense, because... No, they're in college. Like, that's a, I'm telling you right here, it says it says a group of high school students, Mark, China... That's wrong. <laughs> I'm just telling you what's wrong. We haven't gotten <laughs> past the, <laughs> the first fucking scene of the movie. <laughs> All right, but but listen. Actually, I don't know, because because they're walking into like a college lecture. Yeah, but then we see them at a football Correct. game in the bleachers, like high school kids. They're like drinking. In they are. They are totally drinking. <laughs> and one of them hiding it. One, one of them claims to have stopped drinking, <laughs> like he's over drinking. <laughs> <laughs> if that kid's in high school, there's some major fucking problems. But when did drinking age become 21? It wasn't in the 80s. Are you sure? Yes, Joe. Not sure. Joe, because like, wasn't that like a thing in the Vietnam? <laughs> That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> I don't <laughs> to fucking make know. You look <laughs> <laughs> to make you answer the question incorrectly. <laughs> All right. So anyway, the butler gives him his caffeine and cigarettes because he's drinking with them. I guess. Um, also, I think I'm super jealous. What year did this come out? 88. So three years before is when it changed. Really? Yes. It was 18 in the early 80s? Yes. Doesn't that change your opinion of a lot of 80s movies, kind of? Like that portray like teen drinking? Because it was totally normal? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's shit I watch in the 80s that I'm like, this is insane. <laughs> Wait. I don't think This might be great. just be Michigan. Dude, so I think... It was like state it's all by different state. states. Like, yeah. It was like medical yeah, New marijuana. York, New York was 1985. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, that would explain why the Beastie Boys were always so fucking drunk. <laughs> <laughs> like they were like 18. All their videos <laughs> drinking 40s. That's true. Um, <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. So we'll get past this first scene eventually. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so the butler goes, you're caffeine, sir. Hands him his coffee. 
Your nicotine, sir. Hands him a cigarette and lights it for him. I'm not a smoker, but I was fucking jealous. Don't you want a dude that just sticks a cigarette in your mouth and totally. lights it? Yeah. <laughs> like, I would start smoking if I had that. <laughs> I need to win the fucking lie. I'm going to go buy a ticket later. That's um, what you spend it on? Just some guy? Again, my wife. To, to my do wife it for you in the car. <laughs> 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 I win the lottery and I'm like, hang on, hang on one second. <laughs> I go buy a butler. <laughs> Just to light my cigarettes that I don't smoke. <laughs> that you're fully God capable of putting it. in your mouth yourself. Damn it. That my cunning heel drive me to this woman's, this actress's house. <laughs> you don't have to anymore. Good news. <laughs> your Sundays are freed up. Uh, rich guy shows. Oh, what am I? I'm reading my notes verbatim, uh, which I've never done. Um, so, Mark, uh, we see him. Oh, no. We're, we uh, we get a glimpse of our first two girls, China and uh, what's the other one's name? Sarah? Sarah. Sarah. Um, China and Sarah walking down in like the most 80s outfits ever. You got China who looks like she's straight out of like a Robert Palmer video. Like she's wearing like a black, just all black, but like very, I don't even know how to say it, like modern, like industrial type thing. Like uh, not even industrial, just modern, like big glasses and stuff. And then Sarah's wearing the most wholesome like sundress of all time. So I don't know what temperature it is there because China's outfit is covering her head to toe. Right. But uh, it's California, so I guess it works. And Sarah is our <laughs> Muffy from... Sarah's Italy. Muffy, yes. China, not a bad looking gal herself. No. And also they're all very like natural. Like that's what I always like. That's that's what, that's what, that's what I find attractive in like women in horror. I don't need like the giant boobs, like, you know, the big fake boobs and stuff. Like these two gals are like just really pretty. Same with Barbara Crampton. Yeah. Same with Jamie Lee Curtis. I don't know if those are the two good examples nah, I guess about boobs. <laughs> Why? Does Jamie Lee Curtis have fake boobs? No, but they all just get naked. Oh, those do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but these girls are a little more wholesome. Um, so we meet those two. They're going to be two keys to this show. Uh, they walk by a house, that a giant house, and they're like, oh, look, it's a waxwork which I'd never heard of in my life. And they see a guy dressed as like some colonial butthole outside, <laughs> which is also weird. And they just start talking to him. And he's like, oh, I'm having a private showing at midnight. You can bring your friends, but no more than six, which I don't know why he had to do that. I mean, I know why, but it, whatever. Um, <laughs> and for some reason, like China's like all into it. And she's like, yeah. Yeah. I would be like, no, thanks. That's not, it doesn't seem like something Especially those girls would be interested in. I want to ask you age. about a waxwork later because they talk about it. Oh, in the next scene. So we might as well talk about that. They talk about the waxwork. Like they're like, hey, we got invited to a waxwork. And everyone's like, oh, the waxwork? And everyone's like <laughs> talking about this. Like this is a thing. Had you ever heard of it called the waxwork? Uh, no. Never in my life. No, I, what's the one called? Madam. <laughs> Madam Tussauds. Tussauds. Is yeah. it called waxwork? I don't think it's so. It's called I, Madame Tussauds, right? I, I was going to, I thought about that on my drive home, and I was like, I should look that up for the show. I'm not. But I think it's called, like, Madame Tussauds, like, Wax Emporium. <laughs> <laughs> but my my question, okay, so we, <laughs> I've never heard of it called a waxwork, but what is appealing? Uh, like, I know Madame Tussauds is, like, famous, like, and some of them, I've seen people post pictures on Instagram there, and I'm like, holy shit, they got a picture with that celebrity, and then it's, like, Madame Tussauds. Oh, I, be, I went to the one in California. It's cool. It is cool. But I it's mean, like it's weird. Really right? well done. Yeah, yeah. But like, like I, this guy's, I would not be excited to go to. <laughs> Get the fuck the, out of here. That would be like finding one in your neighborhood. That's like, exactly what that, 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 that's literally what happened. <laughs> this, creep, <laughs> this creep's just carving wax out of shit. The whole wax thing is just weird to me. Like, and how do you make those things? Do you carve like, uh, I have no clue. One of the coolest scenes in this is at the end where you see his like, factory in the back yeah. and it's you'd think it was like going to be a key component to the end and they like it just like there's a scene in that room and they don't really like highlight anything but you see like molds and shit and i was like i want to know more <laughs> yeah you was just movie was just a, just a how-to a documentary yeah. of youtube how to how to make wax a wax work <laughs> anyway um yeah so we meet mark we've met mark we have china we have sarah uh, we also meet Jonathan, the jock, who plays, like, zero role in this entire thing, right? Yeah. That was so weird. Uh, but he's kind of, like, flirting with China. Mark likes China also. But then that kind of flips later. 
Um, but they say they've been invited to this wax work. Um, and then they, they kind of grab these two other weirdos that are like Tony. the misfits of the group. I love Tony. That are also useless. They are there to, to perish. <laughs> and you know that from the moment you see them. You're like, these, these people are done. Um, <laughs> So, so uh, we find out, you know, Mark is digging China, but China's not at all interested to him, in him. Well, we find that out because he screams at her in the middle of class. Oh, yes. <laughs> About that. <laughs> the 80s are weird for that. Uh, and that will continue in The Fly, where misogyny runs wild. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, we, we see inside the classroom, and this professor is a straight up Nazi. Dude. This, well, there's, there's, a, there's a swastika, first of all. There's a, a giant, flag. there's a giant Nazi flag in the corner. And he's doing the Hitler salute. Yeah, he's like, he, he's like, we are talking about dictators! And he, like, shoots his arm up, but then he, like, looks at it like, oh, shit, I wasn't... Like, <laughs> oh, that was a natural reaction. Yeah. Like, really? <laughs> Why? It was the most bizarre thing. <laughs> Why? Uh, well, it was a 40-page essay on the trouble with dictators. That, right. That's when he does that. And that's who. That's when he gets one of the help in the in the house to do that for him. Mark does. Yeah. Um, that is honestly, dude. I laughed so fucking hard at that scene. I wrote it down verbatim. What what his butler wrote down. I, dude. I was laughing so fucking hard. I was near tears. That essay is the funniest shit I've ever heard. But anyway, I'll read it when we get there. Uh, <clears throat> so in the meantime, they decide to go to the waxworks. Um. There's definitely a feeling that it's a little bit weird. Uh, that gets a lot weird when a little person opens the door. Oh, fuck. I want to talk about this little person, but I just wanted to point out that they're watching the football practice right after the class. Right. And uh, was his name Mark? Yes. He's like, oh, she likes that bodybuilder. That guy was the scrawniest piece of <laughs> shit I ever seen. Like, yeah. You couldn't find anybody with muscles. That guy like, was 170 anybody? pounds. And the, and That's being way too generous. And not, and not, by the way. <laughs> and the football practice, Sean, was just them, was just guys jumping in the air and other guys holding them up. <laughs> Did you notice that? There's yeah. no football being played. Yeah. I, I love the 80s for that reason. I mean, they just, they just took, like, they acted like you had, like, no one knew how to play sports. Like, when they showed, <laughs> like, when they showed, like, amateur wrestling in, in movies in the 80s, it was, like, body slam. They were wearing the high school outfits, but just, like, Body slamming yeah. each other and like jumping up in the air. It was like you know, high schoolers are watching this. That's who your target audience, I, dude. I know. And, and, and like with football, literally all you have to do is have like people block and somebody run or catch a ball. You just have to have them running. These guys into are each just other. leaping. It's just more like, like ballet. <laughs> just banging their helmets together. Yeah. It was so weird. <laughs> it was so weird. Yeah, this scrawny guy though. Uh, he'll get his. <laughs> Um, but this little person opens the door at the waxwork. I love uh, this little guy. He's I could not understand a word out of his <laughs> mouth. Uh, but man, he was he was something to behold. Like the way he looked was just interesting. I, I wonder if he had any other roles because like he feels like he's kind of like uh his name's Mahali Mishu Mazaras. Okay. Does it say what country he's from? Um, India? Hungar Hungary. Hungary. Um, well, he's, he's, oh, he's fucking Alf. No way. Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, well, good for him. But he gives, he, he'd be a lot better. Like, what's that girl's name? Zelda. Yes. Like a Zelda. Like this guy should have been, had, had a lockdown on like Butler parts, Butlers in horror movies, Butlers in waxworks. <laughs> but this little Butler opens the door. He says something. I, I don't know what he says. Um, and unfortunately these kids walk in and avoid him like he's got leprosy like they're like the door is enormous it's like a 10 foot wide door and he's on the far right side of that door and they are pressing up against the left side like going in sideways <laughs> like to avoid touching a human being a small human like get the fuck out of here the 80s man and then uh we we are introduced to another butler who plays a pretty pretty critical role in this um donald trump jr the butler <laughs> do you notice that guy looks just like donald trump jr or i don't know which i don't know the two trump kids but the tall <laughs> stupid looking one <laughs> yeah <laughs> like the one that looks like yeah <laughs> Yeah, the one looks like he kills whores for fun. <laughs> uh, that one, dude, this butler looks exactly like him. And I refer to him as such the entire time. Donald Trump Jr. Um, 
So they walk in. These butlers kind of greet them. The doors open up by themselves, and they decide that's a good sign to walk in <laughs> to the creepy house that they've a good sign. never been to. And like, has it been? Open? One of the girls is like, "There should be strength in numbers here. Like, why? Like, I don't want to do this anymore." My question is, was this always open, like in their neighborhood, or did it like appear one day? It seems like it appeared. That's what I thought because they were like startled when they first met that guy. Like, right. oh, what's this doing here? Right. And this guy's and clearly that, been working on it for a long time. <laughs> it's no, so, it has to be because that cop later yes, on. Yes, the cop yeah. comes in and he's like, yeah, it's not even open yet. Right. And they're just walking around. Okay, whatever. Um, so the doors open by themselves. They walk in and they see some fucking gruesome wax work in there. And it is pretty fucking cool. But um, one appears to be like the invisible man putting like a, a gas line into a woman's <laughs> mouth, which is weird. But <laughs> whatever. Um, these wax work... Later on, this movie ramps up in a way I couldn't even, my little heart couldn't even take. It was amazing. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, this is pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. And then the end happens, and I was like, this is the best movie I've ever it, seen in my life. I was not expecting this. <laughs> dude, dude. I was not expecting any, like, from this point on. This point on. Everything that happens, I was like, just like kind of blew my mind. Yeah. Right, yeah, same here. So they walk themselves in, and a guy, like, or uh, was it the, yes, um, Tony? Tony. Tony's the first one to go? Yeah, he's the guy from uh, Twin Peaks. Yes. So Tony, like, walks up to the waxwork and just falls through a portal. And, he, and he's immediately outside Dude, like a cat. You are not given any preparation for this. You have no idea, like... What the fuck is happening? And this like, guy acts it really well. This guy's like, perfect. He, dude, he's so good. Because he like his reaction is like believable. He's like, all right, who put acid in my drink again? He's like, this is a fucking hologram. Like, he's very aware of what's happening. He's <laughs> super aware of what's happening. And he's like, because like in those moments, like, <laughs> I mean, I always say I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> but the reality is you'd be like, okay. I have to use my brain There's a lot and to explain this. Yes. I have to explain what is happening. And that's right exactly now. what he's doing. And it's a, that's a great point because not no one ever does that. No, no. Everyone just is like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like this guy's just like, all right, you want fucking wood? I'll get you wood. Yeah. Like, so, he, so he goes into the cab and, and he he has a conversation with a guy and he's like, did they? My friends put you up to this, blah blah. Which is exactly what you'd yeah. probably do. And like you said, the guy's just like, you have to get wood. And he's like, all right, fine. Fuck you. I'll go get the wood. <laughs> yeah. Tell me what's going on. And he walks out. And he's getting the wood. Like and he's like, what the fuck? He's like, I'll just get the wood. I'll figure out what's going on. He comes back. He in, thinks though. he's hypnotized too, which is also oh, a great explanation. Why would you not? You're in a waxwork. Yeah, a creepy ass building with two weird butlers, um, of two very different also, heights. I love that he says, "Does somebody put?" Yeah, <laughs> very different. Uh, I love that he says, "Does somebody put acid in my drink again?" Implying that this has happened to him once before. Dude. And then he's like, "Wait, I don't drink anymore." Like that's <laughs> that's why he's like eliminated it. It's just because he doesn't drink anymore. Um, he walks in, um, and this guy, this guy's going saying things like, "Yo, your father was my dearest friend." Run, Jack. Even though his name's not Jack, and he's like, "I'm not Jack." And he's like, "Run, Jack." <laughs> um, he's like, "Run as far as you can." Um, and this guy starts turning into a fucking wolf, werewolf. Yes, I don't want to say Wolfman. T, T M Universal. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you just yeah. do a fucking werewolf. Oh my god! And when that guy is turning into the werewolf, like as he goes to get the wood, I forgot the guy's going relax, relax, because <laughs> the guy's like, you gotta get out of here, get out of here. <laughs> fucking Tony's just going relax, dude. Like he's like really like shut the fuck up. Like I get it. Like <laughs> this is part of the show. Like shut up. I'll go do it. Like, uh, but he comes in and this werewolf uh, corners him, ends up biting. Do you him. like how the werewolf looks? It's Dude, pretty it's stupid a, it's looking. It's a party city costume. Very much so. A hundred percent. I've seen it. You could buy it for like hundred and fifty dollars. I I almost bought it last year. But my man G Money on Twitter tweeted me and said that the Wolfman needed his own movie, and I completely agree. Just to show me a werewolf movie that looks like that. If I'm because, fine because, with it. Because <laughs> other people come in with like the silver bullets and stuff to try and stop the werewolf. And this thing eats one of them, and he's he's not even opening his mouth. He's, he's just pressing his mask against it, and blood is just squirting everywhere. This werewolf fucking, first of all, pimp slaps one guy, and the guy just like, I, I love this werewolf. Like, this is just what werewolves should do. They should just fucking kill people. Like, who gives a fuck? Well, it bites Tony, so Tony's like starting to turn. Yeah. Um, in these, in the, we'll learn that everyone gets a segment in this movie, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the first segment. And in each segment, they have, like, a ton of actors. Um, and there's always, like, another hero. 
So these two like hunters come in. Um, they've got silver bullets. They drop them. They are like picking them up. As I've never seen anyone work so hard to not pick something up. Like they're like, uh. werewolf comes over. He gets one of them. Um, he's biting them. He's biting them. He's, and he rips them in fucking half. He literally picks a dude up and just rips them. <laughs> that was in half. awesome, dude. I was not expecting that. No. The because gore I, in this is insane. Yes. Because in the next segment, it even ramps it up more. Dude, to the point where I was like, I, I think I'm grossed out. Yeah, I was I was nauseous in the next one. Thank you. So it was, was fucking eating. gross. I was like, I, Dude, can't, so was I. I can't do this. So was I. And I like <laughs> spit it out. I was like, you know what? I'm done. Um, it was nuts. Uh, but our pal turns into a werewolf, Tony. Um, and he gets shot by the old guy and kills yeah. him. <laughs> the old guy kills him. And as it pans out of the story, we realize he's now part of the wax work. And his friends are walking by him. <laughs> and are like, fine. They're like, they don't realize. They yeah, well, what, I mean, what? imagine I again, got turned into again, a wax. <laughs> you walk by and you're like. <laughs> this is what we talk about a lot. Like, don't we talk about that with like aliens or something? Like, oh, Superman. That's our oh, point Clark with Kent? Superman. It, yeah, because yes. people are like, oh, you Clark Kent he just puts on glasses. And it's like, yeah, well. If, if there was, was an alien walking around, like, Joe, that guy looks like you. He'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, I could be like, yeah, that is me. He's like, okay, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, buddy. <laughs> it's it's true. Like that's exactly the same point here. Um, but he's part of the wax work now. We immediately jump to China, yep. who for some reason is hot for a uh, wax vampire. With that vampire is handsome as fuck. But his back is too like. Well, in in her scene, in her, her, her wax work, it's just the vampire's back, like on stairs, like you don't see his face, and she's like, "Well, hello," <laughs> and she like undoes the velvet rope and goes over, and sure. she enters the. Well, portal. it paid off because he was good looking. <laughs> it did pay off, <laughs> and she died. <laughs> uh, so she goes into her story, which is a vampire story, and this is like the point where I'm like, I think I'm in love with this movie. Like, this is my fa- werewolf I think- vampires. So I said, to, I forget who I said it to. Um, this is reminding me of like a Monster Squad for a, uh, for much. a more mature audience. Very much, which is I think it was why I liked it so much because Monster yeah. Squad's awesome. Very much, it's yeah. Like that's a, a perfect. Record. That's a perfect example of what this is. It, it's it's. Very good. Imagine if Decker had made this. Who made it? And he called it Monster Squad. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Is somebody um, Anthony Hitchcock? He directed Hellraiser three. Son of wow, that's (laughs) (laughs) how the mighty have fallen. Uh, Which this three had to have been in the nineties, right? I think it was nineteen ninety. Yeah. Okay. So he just whatever. Um, so China's in this, um, she, uh, 1992, you know, she's with these clearly vampire. The best part about this too, is they don't try to hide anything like the werewolf one. You immediately know this guy's a werewolf. This one, you know, they're fucking vampires. Like from moment one, from moment one, she walks in and they're all like very goth. It's a very gothic castle and they're eating the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. (laughs) That food is so gross. They're like, she's like, like, "Mm, steak tartar. He's like, yeah. (laughs) That's what I was about to say. In every segment, it's like, it's so like on the nose. It's like, won't you come have a bite to eat? (laughs) Like, it's just so on the nose, but not in a bad way. It's like very, it's charming in a way. It's very interesting. But yeah. (laughs) Also, like that every time you say on the nose you touch your nose it's like, like they can all see you <laughs> everyone um so the vampires <laughs> here's something you're a piece of <laughs> what it's funny um the vampires let her know uh that her fiance is there but i had to leave um that'll come into play uh but he's here to watch over her and they serve her uh he's like i hope you like raw meat and she's like well i like state tartar and he's like steak tartar Oh yes, with the sauce. Tartar, <laughs> pouring blood. All Disgusting. Just, yeah. Would you like some sauce? And she's like, Yeah, sure. Whatever you recommend. And it's just fucking, dude. It's a fucking gravy boat of blood <laughs> being poured over already raw. Dude, I'm get, I'm not gonna gag talking about it. It was fucking gross. Yeah. And then everyone proceeds to eat it like a bunch of animals, like blood. And like, they're making like, I, blah, somebody blah, chewing blah. is like my biggest pet peeve. And you could play blah. that and the sound of like a terrible like porn, <laughs> terrible deep throat porn, and no one would be able to tell the difference. Like the way these people are eating, it's like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> fucking gross. It's it fucking vile. Um, I was so sick. Yeah, um, it gets grosser. Oh, it gets so much grosser. Um, 
so she ends up, uh, she just ends up going to her room. The vampire son comes in. He's like, he wants them all for himself. Goes to bite her. She splits. Um, she hears a voice. He calls her a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of them. These guys, these vampires <laughs> love that word. They love it. Yeah, they're like Freddy Krueger. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, so this girl's on the run. She kind of hides in this dark room, and she hears, it's me, Charlie, your fiance. <laughs> I love that they have to say that to explain to us, yeah. but like, like that would be like me, so, Aaron, it's your husband, Sean. <laughs> yeah, I know who Sean is. It's me, Charles, your fiance. But wait, um, she, that wasn't just like, you know how the other segment, the werewolf, he was like, I was friends with your father. Yeah. This guy was really her fiance? Yeah. But isn't she in high school? Yeah, but not the character. Like these people are all taking a role. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But not China. Like no, yeah, China. Okay, not. that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is like her character thing. Um, he's like, don't come in. I don't want you to see me like this. Yeah, and, she, and you know what? He's fucking right. Yeah, nobody I, wants to see him like that, dude. She turns on the light. He's chained up, like by all fours. Yes. And half of his leg is decayed. Is it's like eaten. gone. It's eaten. Yeah, it's what they ate for dinner. Right. And there's a rat on it. Dude, it's fucking gross. And I'm not saying like half eaten like he's got a stump. It's even worse than that because it's no, got because the because fucking the, bone. The bone's still attached. Yes. And like a full <laughs> foot. Yes. It's just, it's the, just meat. the meat. Like is they've gone. been cutting off his meat and keeping him alive. Yes. Dude, my note here is this score is disgusting. It's fucking it's gross. gross. It's fucking gross. And then and the vampire comes in and <laughs> rips off a chunk. Dude, it just is eating it over him. It was crazy. Dude, <laughs> this movie is mind melting. It's mind melting. That scene was awesome. It was so Dude. good, but like it's shocking. Dude, this movie. Because you're staring at it, you're like, I can't believe this movie is showing this. And this guy comes in and just <laughs> eats it. Dude, it was crazy. Honestly, people making horror movies need to take note of this film. <laughs> it is like a way to do something, like perfectly ramp up a movie. Dude, they start this out, and I'm expecting like a pretty wholesome, just weird flick. Yep. yep. And what I got was fucking brutal. Brutality. <laughs> totally unexpected. Dude. And, Brutality. And he goes, he, uh, he, the vampire is like, oh, you came down for a midnight snack and is literally eating the meat off his bones. Um, she starts getting into a battle with him. She ends up using like uh, two knives, knives as a crucifix. crucifix. She takes him out. Puts it on his head kind of like in Fright Night. Right, like exactly like Burns it. him. Yep. His head explodes. Oh, it's awesome. I mean, explodes. It's incredible. And then she kind of battles these um, women vampires. vampires yeah. And she just like, it's just gore. Dude, blood is spraying like Evil Dead style. Yes. All over her, all over everybody. Yep. Um, she escapes. But the king vamp shows up, hypnotizes her. Starts sucking her blood on the stairs. She gets seduced la. very quickly by him. Very just, quick. I mean, it, it was cool yeah. because, like, you know, uh, in, like, the story is just, like, don't look at his eyes. It's, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. fall under his spell. And that's exactly what happens. Boom. Yeah. Done. Um, and that's it, man. And she is, uh, she's taken to the ground, and that's it. Yep. That's a wrap. To so Tony and China gone. Gone. Uh, Mark and Sarah uh, walk out of the building. Like, they're just like, okay, time to go. I guess they just assume Mark and, or China and Tony left. Which isn't an un like No, it's not when totally you, When you look, when you dissect a movie, you're like, why would they do that? But it's like... And they're horny teenagers. And they've like, been drinking. And everyone, like, even everyone in the film, like, later, like, Mark's like, I'm worried. Like, where are they? I can't, like, no, no one's home. And everyone's like, they're fucking. They're probably at a hotel. They, yep. And he, they're right. <laughs> they're right. That's exactly what you'd assume. You'd be like, oh, great. Yeah. I mean, you certainly wouldn't assume they fought monsters and turned into wax. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, randomly, the jock uh, is like Jonathan the jock. Old, the old bodybuilder. The old bodybuilder, 110-pound bodybuilder, <laughs> finds a payphone, calls Sarah's house, I guess, and it's like, they were like, yeah, she's at the wax work. So he's like, oh, all right. He goes there. Um, he meets the creepy guy that we met earlier, the owner, and um, that owner pushes him into a waxwork, and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> Jonathan's gone. We don't even see it. No, <laughs> it just it was just like I think they were like, oh shit, we lost count. Well, later we'll find out they need eighteen ghouls to fill their waxwork for a purpose for nefarious purposes. Uh, I feel like at the end they were like, oh my god, we only did seventeen, and then they're like, I just. 
Fucking write this jock and just shove them in. Just push them into something. I actually have the list of the 18. Do you really? Yeah. Okay, we'll get, let's do it when we get to, like, the fucking brawl for all yeah. at the end. So Mark walks Sarah home uh, and, you know, laying it on thick to Sarah. He's kind of sw- changed his mind. And this is the weird, like, Mark switch where he's no longer, like, the rich brat. And he's just, like, the good guy. Super sleuth. Super sleuth. Great guy. guy. Great all-around Any guy. Any root for him. And not crying for coffee. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not crying yeah, to his mom. The beginning is kind of an unnecessary. It's 100% unnecessary. That's what I'm saying. And like a fucking butler, like that does not make me be like, I love this guy. Yeah. He is a man that lights cigarettes. But I guess you need those butlers for the end. You do need him. But like you could have done it in a different way. You certainly don't need to have him light his cigarettes and cigars for him. And him crying about coffee <laughs> while reading comic books in the morning. Um, <laughs> it was so fucking weird. Did you uh, drink coffee when you were in high school? Oh, well... My grandparents started giving me coffee in like elementary school, <laughs> which is probably a problem. But um, I didn't drink it like not like I now. wasn't like no, not like yeah. I need this to survive my day. But I drank it like regularly. Okay. I also worked at Dunkin' Donuts though. So. Okay, I was just I don't. Know. But like I didn't need it. Like I need a coffee in my morning. Right, you didn't start every day with a coffee. Mm-mm. Yeah, no. I mean, it probably would have helped me. <laughs> yeah, totally. I was fucking exhausted totally. all day. <laughs> <laughs> slept through every class. Dude, yeah. I, I slept through so much. A coffee would have probably really helped. I completely really agree. They probably should put coffee in high schools. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so Mark, uh, Mark and this girl, uh, Sarah kind of says, like, no, Mark, I really like you, and I think you're very attractive. I'm just looking for something else. Very weird way to break it to him, but he accepts. And he's kind of like, meh. Meanwhile, Mark goes to his house, and in another unnecessary scene, but so fucking funny, he walks into this um, Spanish lady's room, and you're like, who the fuck is this? And you realize it's one of his, like, maids, butlers. Uh, Is butler a man, or is it, like, somebody that serves food? I think it's a man. Uh, Butlers and maids. What's a buttress? The buttress of Windsor? I don't know. I didn't know that was a term. Uh, (laughs) Anyway, this woman, this Spanish woman sitting there. And the Spanish comes into key because um, we find out she was the one writing his di- paper on dictators for him. A buttress is a uh, architectural structure that's built against or projecting from a wall. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Joe jo nailed that one. <laughs> uh, so Mark Mark grabs the paper and he's like, thank you so much for writing this paper for me. <laughs> Joe's laughing so hard at the buttress. Sorry. Um so Mark grabs the homework, he walks out in the hall, and then he reads it out loud, and the paper she wrote was like, I forget the title of it, but it was like, dictators, like, the, the, uh, my information about dictators. And he goes, I think dictators are the bad people. They have the shouting voices and the small mustaches. <laughs> That's my favorite paper ever written. <laughs> like, that is perfect. Yeah, I mean, 100% correct. 100%. Um... Mark, we get the scene where Mark is on the phone. He finds out Tony never came home. He finds out China never came home. Uh, he goes to the cops. We'll, we're going to speed this one up a little bit because we've got a lot to cover. Yeah. Um, so he goes to the cops, and this is my favorite, maybe my favorite movie cop ever. Dude, he's such a ridiculous. He sucks as a cop. Which, you know what? Can we be honest? Is he like the most realistic portrayal of a cop you've ever seen? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no. he He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, we, do you know? Like, he walks in and he's like, we've got missing. He's like, my two friends are missing. He's like, do you know how many people are missing right now? The answer was 13. The 13. And he's like, you think I got time for shit? <laughs> Like, what don't you, you know? Fine. He's pretty realistic. Same case? <laughs> because, because if somebody came and was like, hey, I think these guys got turned into wax. You'd be like, don't waste my fucking time. Yeah, yeah that's um, what I mean. But he screams a lot. He screams a lot. And he go, he ends up going with the kid to the wax museum. And the guy opens the door because the kid's like, there's going to be a little person that answers the door. And yeah. it's just the guy. And he's yeah. like, <laughs> come on in. And I'll show you around. But then the cop is like bending over. And and the uh, sculpt, what do you call him? The waxwork sculptor yeah. is like, oh, lean closer. And straight up puts his hands on him and tries to push him forward. Tries to push him forward. And uh, this is actually the most realistic part of the movie because the cop just like stands upright and is like, what are you, I got to get out of here. Dude, no, th- that cop would be like, why the fuck are you talking well, to me? No, oh yeah, that's true. That's true. That cop would, 
fucking or any human being him. be like what are but you doing it was more realistic than later when the little person shoves a, a giant through <laughs> through the portal like at least this guy was like what why like he just like stood up like he, this guy tries to shove him and he just stands up all he had to do was put his the force of his man physique backwards and was like no <laughs> i'm not getting pushed like why are you doing that to me um but the cops basically like i'm out of here uh the cop has, has like a weird flashback where he realizes that he, after he leaves goes back to his office well on his way out he, he, I, I didn't write down what he said but it was like the kid was like don't you believe me and the cop was like Ooh, maybe and it was nah, like, yeah. nah, i don't like, he, <laughs> yeah yeah he goes through a lot of stages here because then he goes back to his office and he starts having flashes of like the missing people and people in the wax work. Yeah. And he's like, all right, I got to go check this out again. <laughs> so he goes there and he, he, he walks in um, and he takes a piece of China's face yep. off and like puts it in a Ziploc bag as if it's going to be evidence. Um, meanwhile, uh, our boy Mark and Sarah, they go to his grandparents attic to look at newspapers. And this is where it comes in. The murder comes in because he's looking at a newspaper that says like man murder prime suspect is this Jamoke. <laughs> and that Jamoke is the waxwork, guy. the waxwork guy. And he's like, see, I told you I knew him. So waxwork guy killed grandpa. Yes. Also it said horror Lord murdered. <laughs> so his grandpa was a horror Lord horror Lord horror Lord. Yeah, I guess so. I wish we were horror lords. <laughs> I Are don't we wish not? we were murdered. We might be. <laughs> Damn it. We shouldn't put that on a hat. Horror lords. It's such a hard thing to say. This is so much less cool than Joe Logan. <laughs> um, upstairs, we get a weird, basically, uh, what do they call it? Uh, a mummy? <laughs> no, not a red herring, but uh like a glimpse of the future. What is Foreshadow? that? Foreshadowing. Because she finds a Marquis de Sade book in his grandparents' attic. Yeah. Creeps. <laughs> she <laughs> loves bondage. Why would your grandparents have that <laughs> book? It's fucking gross. Uh, so, yeah. Um, the cops walk <laughs> in. Um, the cops now. The cops still digging around. And he just walks into a gym. He's, he's like. <laughs> earlier for a guy that was like, don't push me into that set. Literally just walks into the mummy set. Like just it's right in front of him and he just walks forward into it and he's in mummy world this mummy best mummy of all time i i that's actually my note that this might be my favorite portrayal of a mummy in a movie 100 percent, dude <laughs> even the makeup of the mummy like he's got a gory ass face under this mummy Big tarantula mask. dude it's fucking phenomenal well, under wraps had a gory face under wraps mummy was like <laughs> no because this one was like rot like r wet it was like yeah. moist under wraps was a very dry corpse of it. Was, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> Why would you be moist? I mean, you know what? I take it back. Fresh. Under wraps is the most it's realistic. Get the fuck out. Dude, <laughs> he had all of his teeth. <laughs> he had the best pair of teeth any person from they Egypt ever had. Were they dentures? Fake? Okay. Um, I don't remember it because I don't care. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the mummy comes out. Uh, and they're like one of the guys there starts praying to the mummy, and, the and he mummy stomps on it. Fucking just stomps his head, squishes like, it like a grape, <laughs> like a grape, and fucking blood is everywhere. Um, the cop shoots him. He gets pimp slapped like the guy earlier. Um, oh, and the, the, there's an older guy there with the cop, and he tries to stab him with like this giant thing that was in the room. St he does stab him. And then the mummy picks him up by the fucking yep. head and then stabs him with it and then, like, takes it out of himself with this guy's body. Yeah. I mean, it bends the rules of physics, it but it was awesome. Fucking awesome. It was incredible. Um, he then tosses a girl, the girl that was with them, into the coffin. I, I, this might be confusing. When I say this girl, we don't know who she is. She's just a part no, of this mummy just, set. Yeah. Um, he tosses the woman from the mummy set in there. And then he tosses the cop in and shuts the fucking lid. Yep. Awesome scene, though, man. Like, it was short and sweet and awesome. Yes. Um, we are then introduced to Sir Wilfred. <laughs> Sir Wilfred or Sir Alfred? Wilfred. Sir Wilfred. Yep. Um, Mark and Sarah go to Sir Wilfred's, who we don't know who he is. He's a man in a wheelchair wearing a safari outfit <laughs> who's fucking tickling the ivories like a mad... Tickling the ivories like a mad <laughs> fucking jazz musician. He's over there fucking. Who says it? Tootling. <laughs> what a phrase! <laughs> tickling the ivories. Uh, 
And, and he comes speeding out in his little motorized wheelchair. And you're just like, well, who is this cat? Because he co- you see him behind the piano and he's just like. And then Mark and Sarah come in. He's like, oh, take a seat. And he comes out flying out with this motorized wheelchair, which is funny enough. And then he, as he spins around, you realize he's wearing a fucking full on safari outfit with binoculars around his neck. Like as if he's, he's about to go. (laughs) He's just playing the fucking piano. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) It was so funny. This guy's perfect. I love him so much. Um, It was so great. Uh, But he basically explains what's going on. He explains they need 18 people to fill the wax work. Um, this oh, and right before that scene, waxwork owner is pissed because the cop's partner oh, right, tries right, to break right. in, and we are introduced to a really tall butler. I don't know if that, that's Donald Trump it. Jr. Yeah, yeah, and he snaps the guy's neck. Just snaps the guy's neck, and the butler's like, "What we did need you to kill him, him yeah. for? We we still need two more. He would have been perfect." And then, um, yeah, he's yes. like, "Get rid of that. It's useless." <laughs> Talking about a man's corpse. <laughs> Fucking so back to this despicable. guy. He's telling him how they need. So now 18. he's explaining why. Yeah, they need the eighteen people, but really they only need two more. Did we say that um, Wilfred was friends with the grandfather? Um, no, no, he's he's yeah. saying that right now. Yeah, he's yeah. saying it right now. He was friends with Mark's grandfather, um, and the, the displays are technically these spirits, these ghosts, um, and they need 18 total. They collected trinkets from the 18 most evil people who ever lived. And Lincoln stole them, and he sold his soul to the devil. And this, the, voodoo, the Haitian voodoo comes into play. This is the worst part of the movie. And it's not even bad, because you just don't turn it, tune it out. Because Sir Alfred is so charismatic. Like, it's, it's just okay to watch him talk. Yeah. But what he's saying is such horse shit. It's unbelievable. I, I kind of like... The I like stealing the, st- the, tr- the trinkets of the 18 most dude, evil Dude, I like the story 100%. Just this explanation, dude. Sir Wilfred talks for a while. That, that was very and it, it, none of it, None of it makes much sense at all, but I'm fine with it. And also, this goes to show you, if you're going to have somebody, like, tell you the whole story, if you're going to have a mangle expert... Um, that is... Yeah. He's, he's a mangle, mangle expert, nice. but without a book. He's just working off memory here. <laughs> but he's more so, because he, like, we'll find out that he's very involved in... All of this. Yes. But the takeaway is he sold the soul of the devil <laughs> because of Haitian voodoo. But but he's he's owns the wax museum because he's trying to bring the 18 most evil beings back to life through the wax bodies. Through the wax bodies. Yes. So he needs two more left, as we learned earlier. Obviously, Mark and Sarah are the prime candidates for that now. I also love that you didn't get this explanation until like the last 30 minutes. And it right. didn't matter. Exactly. And, and the explanation, again, if you're going to have somebody explain everything, make them charismatic. I loved Sir, <laughs> Sir Wilfred. It was fucking awesome. Like, I did not mind it. The, fin- the, the final fight sequence when he appears. Dude, I cannot wait. OK, so <laughs> so as they leave, Sir Wilfred gets on the phone and I don't even know what he says, but it's something like. I, I don't even know, like it's like. Tell the others, like, our latest, our last victims have been found or something. Yeah. Something along those lines. It made no sense, though. <laughs> um, but he sends them out because he says, you have to destroy it. You have to burn them all. So they go with Specifically, gasoline. the remaining empty ones. Because if he can't fill them, then it's over. Yep. So I'm thinking, in my this is me. I'm thinking this is it. This is the solution. This is what's going to happen. Couldn't be further from the <laughs> you fucking. They're just gonna burn it. I thought this was the end of the movie. Yeah, and and this was a great movie because I didn't know I didn't check the time ever in it because I just really. Which is always it. a good sign. Oh, it's always a good sign. Yeah, because I really enjoyed it. So I honestly thought like I didn't know how much time had elapsed, and I was like, oh, is this the end? I thought this was the finale, and it's so far from that. Um, we to just to speed things up. Mark goes into. They both go to the wax work. Um, Sarah gets. Uh, sucked in, tranced like a like a hypnosis into her. She just walks into her portal. Um, Mark is pushed in by the butler, um, and Mark is. Or first, we see Sarah. She's in Marquis de Sade. Yes, world. Um, it's weird, and it's it's actually pretty accurate to like what he did, um, but not quite. <laughs> and honestly, if you know a lot about Marquis de Sade, I don't care. Like, don't. I'm sorry. Don't tweet me. <laughs> Marky decides a piece of shit. He's a fucking weirdo. Like, 
Uh, it's as close. It's fine. <laughs> I think it's a pretty realistic representation of what he did. Sure. Um, I don't know if he ever like fell in love with them. I don't know. Um, but she's getting whipped, obviously, because it's Marquis de Sade. <laughs> and I like, honestly just go Wikipedia Marquis de Sade and whatever. You get a good idea of what he is. Um, meanwhile, cuts to Mark, who's in Night of the Living Dead. And it's in black and white. And it's fucking awesome. Yep. Um, but Mark runs off. Um, he He's able to escape and he finds the wall of a portal. And he's like, if I don't believe in you guys, like. You can't do shit. You can't do shit to me. Yep. Which is what he does. And it, he also discovers that because he doesn't believe in it, he can go jump through the portal, which he does. Um, so he escapes Night of the Living Dead world, jumps into Marquis de Sade world, beats the shit out of uh, some French wiener guard. <laughs> you think like if we went back in time like to that era, you think we could beat the shit out of like a soldier or you think they were pretty tough? I'm just curious. Because f- in this scene, I was like, I could take old old timey guards. And then I was like, well. It's not like they were any weaker. <laughs> They're still humans. Still but human. I feel like they were like. They're more into bare knuckle boxing. They, they were pretty fucking tough. I think they're tough. I think they were yeah. tough. I think they would kick our ass. <laughs> <laughs> the shit out of us. <laughs> Which is so funny. Because it also might be because they wore those stupid hats and wigs. So you're like, eh, yeah, that guy's a weirdo. Yeah, like I remember my grandpa being like, I learned how to swim because my dad would just get drunk and take me to the, to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So, like, they're definitely tougher. Yeah, they're way tougher. <laughs> they don't need shit. But we could probably wreck them emotionally. Just insult them? Like, insult like, their be mothers. like, yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> your dad hates you. That's why he tried to drown you. Like, oh, my dad does it. <laughs> Just beat them psychologically. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just tweet um, at them. And <laughs> tweet. Do, what's your Twitter handle? <laughs> <laughs> um, decide talking. Uh, he, Mark runs in, he frees Sarah, but Sarah is all up in Desaad's business, man. She's she's all about him. And Desaad starts talking some major bullshit to Mark. He's shooting his shot. I'm fucking Mark. He's like, some boyfriend you are. She had her first orgasm at the <laughs> end of a whip, which is such a creepy, awesome line for that scene. Um and it like really affects Mark. Like Mark's like, what the fuck? Um, but Mark's like, here's my gun. Because Mark's like, Sarah, if you don't believe him, yep. it won't. Nothing can happen to you. And he fucking hands Marquis de Sade the fucking gun, and he tries to shoot him. Nothing goes right through him. Sarah kind of sees the light, reaches her hand out. Mark puts his hand out reluctantly though, but takes Sarah back, which is a weird scene. Um, and they and they're about to leave, and he, you know, he explains the whole barrier thing to her, and they they get out. But they are bre- greeted by Donald Trump Jr. <laughs> and uh, the owner, who I don't really ever catch his name, but whatever. <laughs> um, and Mark's like, "Looks like your little plan failed." David Lincoln. So yeah, Lincoln. Oh yeah, right. He said it earlier. <laughs> um, so they're greeted by Lincoln and Trump Jr. Um, he goes, looks like your little plan. Fa-. By the way, me calling him Trump Jr. is not a political statement. This dude just look, he's got like slick back hair and he's a tall goof. So take it easy. You don't easy. need to fucking apologize. I'm not apologizing. I'm just I'm saying I'm apologizing for the people that are about to be mm. <laughs> I'm apologizing for them being assholes. I don't <laughs> give a shit. Anyway, Donald Trump Jr. Jerk. <laughs> uh so Mark's all high, high and mighty, and he's like, looks like you're little... Oh, by the way, Marquis de Sade said something in that scene that will come back, and he's like, I'll see you later. Like, fucking to Mark. So Mark comes out, and he's like, looks like your little plan failed to Lincoln. Womp womp. Because in walks the two idiot weirdo friends <laughs> we had seen all movie, and they're like, oh, this place is great. <laughs> <laughs> and they immediately fall into their portals. And, the last two. And... It was awesome because they don't like wait. We don't have to watch it all again. Uh, for a minute, I was like, do I really have to sit through this shit again? But no, they instantly die. We see the weirdo guy die in the Night of the Living Dead scene. And we see the girl being tortured by Desaad yeah. in her scene. So now I'm like, holy fuck. He just finished it. Yeah. Like. In front complete. of Mark, just made Mark watch. Like, <laughs> like it couldn't have been any better. Um, and he goes, "Live, my children, live." And every fucking waxwork, it comes to comes life. Alive, dude. 
if this isn't the best fucking ending to a movie I've ever seen in my life, like, <laughs> dude, this movie because not only do these things come alive, but then we are treated to a, a battle led by Sir Wilfred. Yeah, and not only that, but we should also mention all these waxworks are homages. Um, um, homages? <laughs> homages? Homage. I'm like having like a brain fart. Like one of those things where like a word homage. looks weird. Homage. Homage. Like when a word looks really weird to you, yeah. you're like, gas. That's a weird word. Gas. <laughs> <laughs> but homage, yeah. Um, everything's an homage. Like there's like pod people references, which actually turns out to be a uh, little shop of horrors reference later. Um, it's a live baby. Wolfman, Invisible Man, you see everything. Well, the Venus, Frankenstein. The Venus flytrap was the Little Shop of Horrors reference. The pod was um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Oh, they were different? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought they were the same plant. Okay. Because um, I did see the pod for sure. And then I just thought it was the pod talking. And, it, and that big plant is like, feed me. Dude, it was awesome, dude. This and then is they like, feed him the little guy. <laughs> this is the greatest. This is the greatest thing ever. So these things all wake up. Um, Making Desaad's threat a little bit more uh, <laughs> troubling because <laughs> he's alive. <laughs> um, we see a bad Jack Torrance ripoff come out. It's a guy in plaid with an axe. He's just an axe. He's just a lumberjack, but kind of a nod to him. But he's like talking like not English. He's just like, <laughs> <laughs> but then the fucking doors fly open and Sir Ar- Sir Wilfred's here. With a crew. With the biggest He's got a crew. posse. Dude, Sir Wilfred has a posse. Yes. Wait, you, gotta yeah, you got to make a sticker. I, I, that's our next sticker. The Andre the Giant one? Yeah. Yep. Sir Wilfred yep. has a posse. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think a man's height is in a wheelchair? <laughs> uh, yeah, like four foot? Four foot? Yeah. Four or five feet? Yeah, yeah not five feet. No, not four. Not nah, four. Shoulder height to you? We could just measure. We're sitting in chairs. We're just sitting in chairs right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> that's so stupid. Um, <laughs> if only there's a way. <laughs> if only there was a way to know. Uh, this is awesome. Oh, and Jenkins is in his posse. Jenkins is the butler yeah. that lit his cigarettes. And and Mark's like Jenkins, and he's like, "This is what I do in my off time, so <laughs> something stupid like that. fight wax figures." <laughs> And they, like it's like these people knew and oh so I have the eighteen most evil beings. You want me to read them? Yes, yeah, read them. So the eighteen most evil beings are Marquis de Sade, the werewolf, Count Dracula, and his son and the brides of Dracula. The Phantom of the Opera. Okay. The Mummy. Yeah. Uh, Night of, Night of Living Dead. Yeah. Romero mm-hmm. zombies. Frankenstein's monster. Jack the Ripper. The Invisible Man. A voodoo priest. A witch. A snake man. The pods from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Rosemary's Baby, an axe murderer, who you just yeah. mentioned, a multi-eyed alien, the uh, Venus flytrap, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah. That's so cool, It's awesome to bring them I all I just in. love that. Do you think they had rights to that? Like, how do they- I think all of those are open. They're just like- Because they're all like, like, again, like the Jack Torrance, the lumberjack. Like, he was just a lumberjack, but- clearly, But they're not calling him Jack. Right, right. It's clearly just a nod But they're to calling these guys Dracula and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Well, Pye. all those people are- I don't know if you need rights. Public domain? They might be now. Now, Wolf Man is not, because that's Wolf Man. Right, just werewolf. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's crazy, though. It, it, it was fucking awesome, dude. It was so good. Um- so yeah, Sir uh, Sir Wilfred comes in, um, and he goes, "These belong to your father," and he ge- or grandfather, and he gives Mark a fucking sword, which is pretty cool. <laughs> He'll need that. So Sir Sir Wilfred gives him these swords, but then Sir Wilfred wheels away, and he's he's like custom designed his wheelchair to look like a chariot. Mm-hmm. Did you notice that it's got like a it's got like a case now? Yes, <laughs> it was so fucking awesome. And this they just start battling. It is monsters versus people, and it is like a wrestling match. Like it is just yep. people just going everywhere. Um, Battle royale. And the other cool part is we see all their friends who are now bad guys. Like China comes up to them. It comes in the play. Yeah, uh, one of the, I forget who says it. They're like, that's not your friend. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's they're not, not, they're not your friend anymore. Yeah, yeah. 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 And he, but he's like, they've been dead a long time, which. Gee, they have a couple, a couple hours. Let's, let's, <laughs> okay, come on. Uh, let's not be ridiculous. Uh, Trump Jr., though, kills Jenkins, and I've never been so devastated in my life. That was brutal. Yep. Did not like that. Um, but Mark kills Trump Jr. 
with by piercing the smallest hole of all time into his heart. So I guess you hit him where it counts, I guess. And just not really satisfying for that kill. I, I wanted a little more. Dude, he took away Sir Wilfred from us. Sure. I wanted more. Um, monsters and people are going nuts. Some amazing scenes, though. A guy shoots the It's Alive baby or Rosemary's baby, whatever. It was more of It's Alive baby, but... I honestly, I thought that too. Yeah. yeah. Dude, they see it and the guy pulls up a rifle and is like, whoa, and just <laughs> blasts this baby fucking explodes. Yep. And then <laughs> some Dracula turns into a bat and a guy grabs it barehanded and puts a pistol up to the bat. He's holding the bat like by the body and puts a pistol up to the bat's head and blows yeah, it. Yeah, point blank. <laughs> shoots it. <laughs> pulls the fucking bat's head off. I've never seen anything so outrageous and over the top. <laughs> that was so insane. It was awesome. Um, uh, Mark has a, what do you call it? A fencing duel yeah, with, with Mark the sod. Also, uh, Sarah feeds the little person to the to the, the plant that to says the feed, plant. Me. It's like, yeah. feed me. Feed <laughs> me. Good. It was such great homages, but yeah, they, him and Marquis de Sade, they fight. They go into the basement. You know, Marquis de Sade. Hey, we got to end this episode. I can't keep fucking veering off track. I was gonna say did that dude really know how to use a sword. I mean, he knew how to use one sword, but no, you know, he, 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 might he wasn't have. like a known sword fighter. Well, he, he's just know, a creep. He was alive during the French just, Revolution. He's just an asshole. That's true. I'm not arguing that. <laughs> He's just a weirdo. I don't even know if he was an asshole. Well, yeah, I guess he was. Oh, yeah, because those women were held against her. Well, <laughs> never mind. I, I don't know what I'm saying. Again, do not tweet me about it. I don't know anything about him. I don't give a shit. He's just a jerk. <laughs> so, well, actually. Oh, he's actually a jerk. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Sarah kills Desaad from behind. With an axe. Which was great because yep. she deserved some retribution for his bullshit that he was pulling. Um, Lincoln confronts them. And didn't even know this guy was the grandson. He's like, whoa, what a great coincidence. That, 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 was, <laughs> that was a great coincidence. <laughs> uh, he gets shot by Sir Wilfred. Yes, Sir Wilfred. Who then gets back. immediately decapitated. Dude, in the best way possible. Oh, in the best fucking way possible. Sir, Sir Wilfred saves the day. And they're like, come, come on, you can make it. Because there's like flames now because they lit the place on fire. Yeah. And he's like, don't worry about me, you fools. And then a werewolf just comes up behind him and he's like, Bruh! and just <laughs> rips his fucking head clean off his shoulders. Yes. Uh, the couple escapes the waxwork. They go, the waxwork goes up in flames. Burns to the ground. Except for a zombie hand. A zombie hand from the Night of the Living Dead scene. And it's scuttling away from the role, which implies there will be a sequel. Surprise, surprise, there is. There is. Everyone tells me it sucks. It looks terrible. I don't even want to watch it because this was so good. No, it doesn't count. Okay. I, in my opinion, dude, this is not, this is a one-off with an open ending that just leaves you wanting more. Fantastic. And it also ends with, it's your party, which I don't know why. <laughs> was it anybody's birthday? No. Okay. And it also opened up with a weird jazz song. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I mean, I love Do it more it. often. <laughs> Dude, like that, I, I feel like that was just the guy being like, I love these two songs. <laughs> I'm going to put them in this movie. Uh, two thumbs up for me. Two thumbs I, up. I think I gave it four stars on Letterboxd. Yeah. You know, because it's not. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Again, it's, it's not a perfect movie. But it was really fun. And we are the last people on earth to figure this out. Like, we were the last people to watch Waxwork. Like, yeah, dude. Especially people that, that talk about horror all the time. And people are going to probably be pulling their hair because we've had so many people recommend it to us. And so many Patreon people chose this, but I gave it to and, Derek. Well, thank you, Derek. Yeah. Derek, you're not one of the fans that's like, oh, I thought you'd like this. <laughs> <laughs> we get those, too. Uh, so, real quick, uh, it's a long episode. Uh, let's do our... Let's do our uh, Monster Vision game. We're doing some this week, some next week? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, so we used a lot last year, but I was able to find some. Some are, I would say, horror-ish. Okay. Okay. You give me the years again? Yes. Okay. They're horror-ish, though. Okay. So the first two are definitely ishes. <laughs> okay. Um, 1988. Okay. Uh, 34 dead bodies, one motor vehicle crash, flaming fingertips, face removing, head rolls, teeth roll, giant sand snake, dancing around the dinner table, possessed by Harry Belafonte, face stretching, bug eating, stair rolling, attack by ugly sculptures, head shrinking, 
Gratuitous Robert Goulet, <laughs> gratuitous Dick Cavett, four stars. Beetlejuice. There you go. You got an ad off that. Uh, oh, I, I knew it from Sam, Sam Snake. Yeah. Oh, the one I skipped, I should have skipped that one too. The one I skipped was Dancing Around the Dinner Table, Possessed by Harry Belafonte. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's oddly specific. <laughs> um, actually, what we'll do for the next one, I think we'll have you like say, I know, and then I'll finish reading them. Okay. All so right. the people can play it. Yeah. All right. So going forward, Joe will save it till the end um, so you can all play with him. People liked that last time. It was funny. Uh, all right. Next one. Almost just said the name of the movie. 1992. Okay. This is ish. 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 This is ish for sure. But m- more than Beetlejuice. Okay. I'll say that. More in, more in a horror vein than Beetlejuice. Uh, 12 dead bodies, one dead fly, multiple heart staking, neck biting. I know. Fingernail chewing, weenie slicing, eight zombies, nose punching, mm. arm ripping, cat snacking, one vampire brawl, flaming face, Flagpole through the gizzards, two motor vehicle chases with crash. This will give it away. Gratuitous cheerleader practice with funky chicken, kung fu, bimbo fu, electrocution fu. Check it out. Buffy? That is correct. Nice. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Two easy ones so far. Okay. I would say they had, um, <laughs> this one's going to give it away, too. <laughs> Whatever. 1992. Same year? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Twenty-nine dead bodies. That's a lot of bodies. Zombie youth brigade. <laughs> Throat ripping. Corn stalk impalement. Exploding face. Old lady crushing. Wheelchair lady creamed by a dump trunk and launched through a plate glass window of a bingo parlor. Character actor grinding and threshing. <laughs> Death by voodoo nosebleed. Hypodermic attack. Palm slicing. Body part jubilee. One motor vehicle chase. Baseball bat foo. And of course, international harvester foo. You said this one was easy? I kind of thought so, but now reading all the other stuff, no. From 1992? Yeah. Cornstalk? Was there a uh, Children of the Corn? There was. Is that what I'll it count was? that as a dub win. Yeah, Children of the Corn 2. Okay. Because you said A, Children of the Corn. You that, first, you yeah, know? I had no clue which one. Yeah, yeah. Saying. Children of the Corn 2. Um, last one for today? Oh, no, I got two more. I think these will be a little bit harder. Okay. Uh, 1983. Seven dead bodies. Hands roll. Stomachs roll. One brawl. Three pints blood. Zero breasts. No kung fu. One motor vehicle chase. Extra credit for drive-in scene where the bimbo almost gets choked to death by the... Oh, oh Christine. Oh. Okay. <laughs> by the car. Great crash and burn scene. One exploding gas station. One attack by a road grader. Christine. Christine, yes. So am I, am I four for four? You are four for four. The fifth one, you won't get this one. Unless you're a big fan of this film. 1983. Okay. Same year again. Eight dead bodies. One motor vehicle crash. One exploding house, one Nazi gun battle, scissors to the face, and that's it. (laughs) Didn't have a lot to say about this one, I guess. This one's tough. I'll give you the last one and see if you can still weed it out. One of the better Stephen King adaptations. Dead Zone? Yeah. Look at you. I'll count that as... I guess I'll do it as a W. <laughs> Clean sweep. Clean sweep by Joe. Congratulations. Thanks. Those are good. I hope next week's are harder. Maybe I should just stop giving you reading the ones that give it away. <laughs> Maybe I should <laughs> what? stop. I mean, I would have never gotten that without that. I guess that's week. true. I guess that's true. What what am I talking about? Like, why take out the fun of this? <laughs> it's pointless. So uh, I'll just make it so you never win. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want to make it so you can never figure it out. Um 
Next week, The Fly, a fucking gem. Excited to do it. Um, that's it, man. Right? We're done. Yeah. Uh, hats are gone. Adios. Uh, hopefully, we'll have some shirts up in the next couple of weeks. New new shirt design coming. I don't know what yet, but we'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> Facebook.com slash I hate horror. I hate horror.com. Um, that's it for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks to Harley Poe for allowing us to use the song Gorehound off the album Pagan Holiday. Oh, rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. That is the best way to help us. Seriously, that helps us so much. Please do it. Uh, gets us up in the iTunes ranking and uh, it means a lot to us. Um, and if you do, send me an email, Sean at IHateHorror.com, and I'll send you some cool stickers. And once we get these, Sir Wolford has a posse, <laughs> fucking gonna be made in the shade, man. Um, and I think that's it. I'm on Twitter at I Hate Horror Show, Instagram and Snapchat at I Hate Horror. I'm at Jovi421, Boognish1985, and Horror Show Joe. And that's it, guys. Fly next week. Thank you all so much for purchasing the hats, the Mangle Expert hats. I think they came out awesome. Um, you'll be seeing those in your mailboxes very, very soon. Um, so that's it, man. See you next week. And for Joe, this is Sean. Stay weird. Thank you. Oh. Uh... Oh.